A three-year-old male child was brought to OPD with complaints of short stature. Look at the keywords here. It's a male child which is three-year-old. There is short stature. There is poor growth. There are multiple brown cafe or less spots on the body and bony abnormalities involving the radial bone and thumb. Which among the following investigations will not be helpful in diagnosis? We have four options mentioned here. First, we need to make the diagnosis. Short stature and poor growth. Right, so developmental retardation is there in terms of bodily uh, uh, developmental retardation. That is, there is a decreased growth of the body. Number one, number two, there is occurrence of skin manifestations, mainly hyperpigmentation, and number three, there are skeletal abnormalities involving upper limb, involving the radial aspect. All of this is fitting into a possible clinical diagnosis of Fanconi's anemia. Fanconi's anemia. So, if you are suspecting Fanconi's anemia, what are the tests which are indicated? There are three types of tests which you will be doing. First is chromosome breakage studies which are considered the uh, investigation of choice. You, uh, we will check for chromosome breakage in response to metomycin C or diepoxybutane that is the EB. Second is complementation analysis in which uh, G2RS analysis is done in malphalan exposed cells after transduction with viral vectors and uh, those which are expressing the Fanconi genes. And third is genes, specific gene sequencing can also be performed in these patients. So what is the odd one out? The D option, BKC1 gene mutation detection is done for dyskeratosis congenita, which is not being suspected. And so by exclusion, the answer to this question is D. It, this question is very similar to a question which has already been asked in the past. Obviously, the language is slightly different, but uh, and one of one or two options are also different, but it was very similar to a question asked in super speciality exam some years back. The same question is there in your QBank as well. Now, moving further, there are a few points regarding Fanconi anemia that you need to remember. Regarding Fanconi anemia, please understand that uh, there is a controversial thing. A lot of students ask, Sir, Nelson is contradicting itself. Nelson talks about in the text it says that most common manifestation are the skeletal anomalies right then in the table so this is what Nelson says in text then in the table it first mentions skin abnormalities and mentions them as more most common and they mention the percentage as about 40 percent so which one to follow See, be very clear here, if you read the entire text, if you go by various review articles, majority of them, they agree upon a particular thing. They say that both skin manifestations as well as skeletal manifestations tend to occur in almost equal incidence, right? If you take the majority of studies, Nelson also talks about the same thing. Nelson says that about 40% patients are found to have skin manifestation and about 40% are found to have skeletal manifestation. Among skeletal, you will find that 30% are involving upper limb and 10% are involving lower limb. Even in upper limb, it is the radial and thumb defects which are more common compared to others. Now, if you look at, uh, it also depends upon the study that you are quoting. There have been certain studies, if you try to do PubMed search, you will find that there are Asian studies including journals from Korea, including journals like PMC. You will find that the, there have been studies which say that skin manifestations have been reported in as high as 50 to 60 percent in one study up to 90 to 100 percent in another study, whereas skeletal manifestations have been reported in relatively less number. But this percentage you will find in mainly Asian studies, mainly the Korean and Japanese studies compared to the Western population. So we can, if you if you uh, see, if you try to do a rough meta-analysis of all these studies, you are not supposed to do it. But if you do it, if you try to you know, collect 10 studies and compare them, you will find that in the Western world as well as Nelson, skin and skeletal manifestations are found to be almost equal. Whereas Asian manifestations, Asian studies say that skin manifestations are relatively more common compared to skeletal manifestations. What is the correct answer? I don't think examiner is going to ask you to pick among them. But if I have to pick one, I will go in for skin manifestation. One area where everybody agrees, one area where everybody agrees is the most important manifestation, not most common, most important manifestation are hematological manifestations that is pancytopenias 
और बोन मैरो फेलियर से इंक्रूज राइट सो मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट और अफेक्टिंग प्रोग्नोसिस विल ऑलवेज बी दी हेमेटोलॉजिकल मैनिफेस्टेशन प्लीज रिमेम्बर